Welcome back to this episode where we're going to get you caught up on what's going on at Rad BMX Builds. Recently I took delivery of a brand new 2022 SE OM Flyer. This is the 45th anniversary bike. I built one just like this for Bike List, which we sold. But I liked that bike so much, I bought one for myself to add to my collection a baby blue and gold SE Bikes. Let's check it out. Okay, first thing you're gonna notice are these Haro 26 inch gold high flange wheels. Then I added some gold Welgo pedals. I added a rear gold brake. I added a blue Velo seat. I love these flight splatter paint pads. I added some Mission Baby Blue grips, a Dicomp MX2 lever, a Baby Blue brake line. So I'm not into the 29 inch bikes. I'm into the 26 inch bikes. I'm five foot eight and they seem to be a really good fit for me. Next up, something real special and you saw it in a recent video where I had problems completing that build. All those parts came in and I finished it up. I did post a teaser pic on Instagram, which if you're not following, we are about to hit, probably in the filming of this video, 100,000 followers on Instagram at rad underscore BMX underscore builds. If you're following that Instagram, a huge heartfelt thank you to you. Now what I want to show you is my 1988 or 89 GT Mach 1. And the reason I say that with question is that 88 is in the serial number. However, the dropouts in 88 had holes. In 89, they were solid. So even though my serial number is a 1988 serial number, it has 1989 dropouts in the rear. It could be a very late model year, but it's either an 88 or an 89, who knows? But I know you just wanna see the bike, let's check it out. It looks so good with the blue tires, which is one of the things we were waiting on. If you remember the video, I had to order an axle and some spacers and things like that, but the color combination of this bike it's so rad, it's iconic, late 80s, Huntington Beach, just picture shredding around down on the beach with this, with the checkers, with the blue, black, and I like what I did with the chain ring and GT Power Series cranks on here. I think that looks really good. I added black washers to the axles. I got Vans brake pads for the brakes, and I got the mallet stem put in there. And these are the GT Dyno Huntington Beach pads from Flight. I use a lot of Flight products on my bikes. And this is a free shout out to Aaron, the owner of Flight. Thank you so much for making such rad parts and components for these bikes. I really appreciate that. Okay, there are a lot of things going on at Rad BMX Builds. And I want to get you guys caught up on what I'm up to. So, I am now working with Haro and Damian Fulton, the artist of Radical Rick. Haro is going to send me the Radical Rick Tribute 24 inch bike and I will update you later why we're doing that build and what we're going to do with it. Also, I will include a picture of what that bike looks like stock right here so you can see the 24 inch Radical Rick bike. Furthermore, Monza reached out to me and they're going to send me one of their very limited number all white 24 inch Monza bike. I'm gonna share that picture here as well. That bike, I'm gonna do a custom build on. So those are a couple of builds that we have going on at Rad BMX Builds. Okay, let's talk about some other things in the shop. The shop right now is uh, undergoing some renovations. I'm gonna be doing, over the Christmas break, all brand new walls with the pegboard in white. And that'll give me the ability to hang my parts and display different items and it'll make the walls look a lot better. And I just think it's gonna be better for tools. So back here is where I work. I'm gonna put pegboard underneath those cabinets where I can hang my tools. And I think that's gonna be a lot easier for me to find what I'm looking for instead of rifling through a toolbox. Currently, I have 
parts like number plates and seats spread out all over the shelves behind me, which you saw in the intro. I wanna be able to get those on a better type of display by putting them on walls like that. Okay, Rad BMX Builds had a great year this year, and I owe that to you. The subscriptions kind of went up. My goal for 2022 was 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. We fell pretty short of that, but I set a higher expectation because the amount of followers that the Instagram page has. And I probably shouldn't have done that. They're two separate platforms. For 2023, I'm not backing down. We're gonna go for 20,000 subscribers. So if you're watching this video, help me get there by clicking that subscription button down at the bottom. We'd really appreciate that. And that's what helps this channel grow. Now, Instagram, my goal for 2022 is only 50,000 and you guys and girls killed it and we're hitting a hundred thousand today I just checked and we're only a few followers away and that just blows my mind that is so crazy and I I'm so thankful for it so thanks again for that okay I just got the phone in my hand and I'm gonna look and see where we're at because I know we're getting really close it says currently 99,900 so let's see exactly what that is by going to your insights 99,984. We're getting there. We're only 16 away from 100,000. Okay, let's take a break from bikes for a minute and I'm gonna show you some of the stuff that I have in the shop, kind of in the background for display. And these are kind of some of the things, not all, but some of them that are gonna end up on the pegboard once we get it up on the walls. As you can see, I have a thing for number plates. Once I get a number plate, I try to just hang on to it they're for fun, nostalgic, collecting purposes. So I have quite a few, even some with that I had made for my company. Those all sold, but those are the ones I'm keeping. And that was based off the Dino UL plate. Flight made this one right here, really cool. Couple Haro Group 1 plates. Couple Dino plates. The Radical Rick plate, Radical Rick 10. Radical Rick stem. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of Radical Rick. And this is the drawing that Damien gave me, which is super cool. Some pro neck parts, fork standers, trophy. So you can see a bunch of stuff, a bunch of seats up here. Finally got the dyno seat for my 24 inch. These are the Monza seats. That's the blue one I might be using. So let's move on down the collection a little bit. And you can see I have some wheel covers, similar to what's found on my Huffy. Some old school skateboard decks and a few extra seats. And then we get back here and these are all parts. This is a great book if you haven't got it. And this is even a greater book by Eddie Fiola. I took a trip to Mexico and I read this and it's a great book. Now I am gonna go over the bikes cause I have some treats for you, but I just kinda wanted to show you what was in the background. We were talking about parts a minute ago. These are all handlebars that I have. And these again, more parts down here. So yeah, I got a lot of stuff in boxes and the overheads above me. I'm sure you see this a lot in my videos. This is all storage. And it does kind of hang down and get on camera sometimes and that kind of sucks. I mean, I'm working in kind of limited space. Once I get the walls and everything up, I'm gonna make a trip out to Arizona and bring the rest of my collection here. The flooring is this blue and black checker, but it ends right here. And we're gonna extend that the entire length of the shop and then have all of the bikes on display instead of just a big long row of them, which ends here. It'll double in size because I have about, I don't know, 15 bikes uh, in my collection that aren't here. I think bringing all of those bikes from Arizona to Newport Beach and having my entire collection in one place will be much better for content and it'll allow you guys to see in one video all of the bikes when they get here versus making a video of a trip to Arizona or a, a video of what I have currently in Newport Beach. I would love to show you the entire collection all together in one place. I want it to just as bad as you. So sometime after the new year, I'll make that trip out there and then we'll bring everything here. The shop will then finally be complete. 
We covered a lot of stuff that's going on at Rad BMX Builds, but there's still more, believe it or not. I'm really busy. I'm supposed to be retired, and then I took this on as a hobby, and it became a passion, which became a full-time business. But I couldn't do this if it wasn't for you watching these videos, following me on Instagram, buying my merch, so on and so forth. So some of the things that are going on currently are partnerships and relationships with other YouTubers, uh, companies, and things like that. One big one is a podcast, which I just did. It's going to be Radio BMX, R-A-D, small I-O, large BMX. It might be Radio BMX Talk. We're working on that, and I will post that podcast when it goes live, and I'm gonna be doing a monthly podcast bringing in other people from the BMX industry, maybe some writers, former pros, anybody that wants to get on and talk about BMX. It's a great platform to just chit chat about trends, scammers, new bikes, old bikes, retro, whatever the topic may be. I would love it if you would listen to those podcasts because it's a lot of fun and there's a lot of behind the lens type of stuff that people would want to know about that we're finally putting out there on the air. Okay, enough talk. I know you want to see some bikes and I want to show you some of these bikes because I finally got most of the bikes I have here in my collection currently in Newport Beach finished. So I just got an email from SWFT about the eBMX bike that's a 20 inch. They're sending me a bike to build so we can give it away to somebody on Instagram. So make sure you're following me on Instagram if you want a free Rad BMX built SWFT collaboration 20 inch BMX bike. Details will come later when we post on that page. First up is going to be the baby blue and gold SE collection starting off with my 1983 PK Ripper. And I listened and you wanted the gold chain back on, so it's there, bike is done, let's check it out. After that will be the quad angle and the OM flyer. Let's go over it real quick. Amy Grips with the big fat flight donuts, which I really like. Old school Dicomp MX levers, baby blue everything, gold headset, gold wheels, Old school acorn valve stem caps. Here's the gold three piece cranks, MKS pedals, gold KMC chain, velo seat. Got the blue pads, which I really like. MX1000 rear brake, and baby blue Vans brake shoes. And that one will never leave this collection. Next up is the STR1 Stu Thompson quad angle. Just got this and started putting it together. So it's got the gold wheels now. I've ordered a gold headset for it. I've ordered blue quad angle pads. They're actually black with blue lettering, so my mistake. Those pads are coming. I already got the gold brake lever, which just haven't put it on yet because I need to take this grip off. And I don't want to screw up a Stu Thompson mushroom grip. So I haven't done that yet. I did swap out the chain ring. I put on some gold pedals, put on the gold and silver seat post, which is fluted, which is super rad. This is an SE Collaborative Cashy Max seat, which is awesome. I put on gold brakes, and I'm also waiting on some valve stem caps because those just don't cut it. This bike, I believe I'm done with, and I couldn't be happier. Uh, we already kind of went over it a little bit, but it just looks so good with its siblings here in the shop. So those are my three baby blue and gold SE bikes. The 26 OM Flyer, the 20 inch Stu Thompson Quad Angle, and the 20 inch Perry Kramer PK Ripper. Okay, I've shown a few photos of this bike, but I've never really put it on camera because that video will be coming soon. This is the 86 Schwinn Predator Freeform Z. It's in Arctic orange, and I redid this bike for a high school friend of mine that had one of these back in high school in the late 80s. This bike is actually going with me to Las Vegas the week after Christmas, and I'm gonna be giving him this bike as a gift. I'm also bringing along my PK Ripper that I had in high school, and we're gonna get some footage of him and I riding our high school bikes together around Las Vegas. So that video coming very soon, probably right around the New Year's time. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. Let's take a better look at this beautiful bike. It has the mushroom grips and flight donuts in orange. 
Dicomp MX levers, ACS stem with the ACS rotor, the Schwinn Yo front brake with the orange dice cap on the brake line. This has a Rayo wheels, which are original orange dice valve stem caps. Now they painted these white, the spokes and the hubs, and I left them alone. I didn't redo those, I just cleaned them up. These are Kenda K55 freestyle tires, which are exactly what came on it back then. The original Dominator seat, which is in amazing condition. This is a chrome, very lightly fluted seat post. That's the original. This is a new old stock pad that I got, it was still in the plastic when I got it. And then I put new decals on this when I powder coated it. The original chain ring, however, I powder coated the outer portion of it. So the spider's original, the chain ring's powder coated. Sagino so cranks. I did add the white and chrome chain. It's just a cooler look. Added the orange dice on the brake line there as well. And this bike is one of the most underrated 80s freestyle bikes out there. It's such a cool bike. Next up is one of my absolute favorite bikes in my collection. I bought this as a frame and fork set. I already had a set of the decals ironically for this bike, but when I got it, the OG decals were in great shape. So I left them on there and now I still have that decal set sitting with my other decals. But this bike came out great. It is almost done. There's only one thing left to do on it. And now I think that's going to be swapping out the pedals for black ones. Cause I'm just not really into the silver pedals on here, but that's all I had for three piece cranks at the time. So I've ordered some black MKS pedals for it. So don't fret, they're coming. So let's take a better look at this 1985 Redline 500B. I always like to start off at the top with the Amy Grips, the really fat flight red donuts, Dicomp MX brake lever, the baby blue brake line, and again with the flight splatter paint pads, which are just so good. I really like these. And then we'll move down to the Skyway Tough 2 wheel with the baby blue dice and the Comp 3 style tread. Here you can see the MKS pedal in silver, the Redline flight cranks that I put a blue decal on. This was a new old stock Tioga power disc in baby blue with a 44 tooth chain ring, black and chrome chain. And it all fits so good with these decals. The way the colors came together on this bike are perfect. And it just came together beautifully. MX-1000 rear brake. So tell me what you think about that bike. It's truly one of my favorite bikes in the collection. Okay, this next bike's kind of fun. I didn't plan on buying it. It just kind of popped up. I was over at Race Inc. talking to Art and he told me they had a couple left in stock and I just decided, you know what, man, I can't pass it up because it's just iconic. You didn't live in the 80s without knowing about this bike. And I'm not gonna hold out, it is none other than the 40th anniversary Kuahara ET bike, which is super rad. And Drew Barrymore, if you're watching this video, please message me. I would love to get video or a picture of you on this bike. That would be goals. Let's check it out. Starting off with my little ET, found him on eBay. Local bike shop had a basket. I know it's not the white milk crate, this is not an exact movie replica. If you really knew the movie well, the movie bike actually had gold wheels, gold chain ring, things like that. Kuahara grips, flight donuts, and checkerboard. Now the paint on this bike is absolutely stunning, absolutely gorgeous. Also the movie bike did not have a front brake, by the way. I did put on some MKS pedals, so those were swapped out from what came on it. Suntour style seat post clamp. I also swapped out the Kuahara seat for a black Velo. Just seemed to fit a little nicer. MX-1000. Again, stamping on the dropout, which is pretty rad. But a fun bike, I just had to have it. At some point, we'll hang it from a ceiling so it looks like it's flying and that would be really cool. 
Next up is a restoration in progress, my 1990 Dyno Detour. Now I got this bike 100% OG and fairly rough condition. I've put a little bit of work into it, but I'm certainly not done. I just needed the spare time to get to it and I haven't had that yet. So I'm gonna show it to you as is. It is complete, just not fully restored. And I bought this because it's the exact copy of my 87 Performer chrome with the black accents and they're gonna look so good together when I get my performer from Arizona and put it in this collection in Newport Beach. Let's take a good look at the 90 Dino Detour. As you can see the chrome looks really good. It cleaned up nicely. It's got the GT Tomahawks on it. GT Gen 2 fork standards. I added the Repop GT tires. Pink dice valve stem cap because it matches the logo nicely. I did repaint the outer cages of the GT pedals, and then I did paint the tips of these dyno pegs, which are super rad. Original GT seat post clamp, original dyno seat in really good shape. The GT stem, just haven't had the time to really sit down and finish out this restoration, but don't worry, it's coming soon. I'll get every bit of rust off it, polish it up, and it'll look good as new. This next one's a real special build, but I'm not gonna take credit for it because I didn't build it. This goes out to the 80s garage for building one sick bike. I wanted this bike in my collection. I've been looking for one for a long time, and he literally built it just about exactly how I would build it. So I reached out to him and said, hey bro, would you sell it to me? We worked out a price, and now it found a home here at Rad BMX Builds among all my other bikes. It belongs here. Let's check out this 1987 Mongoose M1. This beautiful bike is in Malibu Mint with Amy Grips, Tech 77 locking levers, flight pads, tough twos, Kenda tires, pink valve stem caps, MKS graphite pedals, power disc, the pink nuts on there. Couldn't be happier with this bike. He really did a good job but I wanted to share this work of art with you as well. Okay, don't go anywhere yet because now it's time to bring out the big dogs, the 26 inch Race Inc. Cook Brothers Night Bike Build. This is a pink 26 inch Race Inc. bike just covered in Cook Brothers components and Night Bike Company components. Let's check out this bike. Starting up top, we have the box component grip, the Cook Brothers brake lever, which I did a video on, and these are not available yet, Tongi bars, flight pads, which you can get that are out there, another shout out to flight, and this bubblegum pink is just so rad, I really like it, Rhino light wheels, and these are box tires, which are super nice, I really like them. As we go right up to the front here, let me pull the pad off and you will see, this high polished roughneck stem by Night Bike, Cook Brothers cap, Cook Brothers headset, and I love the labeling on the Cook Brothers. It's all etched in there on all their parts and components. So you can just see how beautiful this is. Everything on this bike, component wise, is polished. The Night Bike seat post clamp and Cook Brothers seat post, the Night Bike Company chain ring and power disc attached to Cook Brothers Racing Cranks, which are absolutely gorgeous. The chrome on those is incredible. And then I got some MKS XC3s, I believe. Yeah, pedals, which are really hard to come by. I had to order those from Japan and they weren't cheap, but they look really good on this bike. The dropout armor on the back of this bike. And then this is what it looks like all together. Just a great bike to ride. The color is superb and it's really comfortable and smooth. This next bike, I didn't go a little crazy. I went full insane and should probably be committed for this build. This is my daily, my baby, AKA gold member, my 26 inch Race Inc. Batima Fork bike. I powder coated everything on this bike, bought all dark blue components. You've probably seen it before, but it's definitely worth going over real quick for you. So let's start by showing you my personal daily rider, my 26 inch racing bike. Starting with the box grips with the blue, box brakes with the blue lever, a metallic blue brake line, which is really sick. I powder coated the bars. This is gold 
and it has a gold decal on there with my Instagram page. It's a little hard to see, but I did it subtle on purpose. Has the Night Bike Roughneck with the Cook Brothers stem cap, Cook Brothers headset, the Batima forks, married up to the Profile Elite hubs, and the Rhino Light Sun rim, which is, I had laced up with blue spokes, black nipples, and then added a Comp 3 style tire. And then I put the Night Bike Starfighter sprocket. I powder coated the Redline cranks and added the Race Ink decal to it. Black and gold chain. Powder coated the Welgo pedals. The Night Bike seat post clamp. You can see a Race Ink decal there quilted pattern seat, box component rear brake, and then the billet BMX chain tensioner with the dropout armor is just a great combination. This thing is ridiculously loud when you do the freewheel on it. That's Profile Elite Racing Hubs for you. But this bike is definitely a one-off, one of one. You will not see another one like it. Okay, if you know me, it wouldn't be a complete collection if I didn't show you my 24 inch full custom Zoos electric BMX bike build. This is in neon yellow with splatter paint that I applied. It's just a sick bike to rip on. And if you're at all interested in Zoos bikes, that link is below and then apply discount code rad BMX builds to save 150 bucks. These come in three sizes, a 250, a 750, and an 1100, which rips. No one's gonna miss you on this bike for sure. Amy grips, threw a bell on there for the trail, little cell phone holder, but I got the Performer bars, the GT mallet stem, and then that yellow neon paint with the splatter is just so 80s and sick. I absolutely love it. So it's got the SE Bozak 24 inch tires, the GT pedals, MCS chain ring, black and chrome chain. And this bike is just so much fun to ride and just the way to get around here at the beach. Last bike, I promise, but certainly not the least. This bike I just got. This is the brand new 20 inch BMX e-bike. Let's check it out. Okay, I really haven't done anything to this bike. It's pretty much stock but you can only imagine what I'm gonna do with it. But currently it's sitting here with a twist throttle, BMX style bars, the one and one eight threadless stem, 20 inch wheels with 14 millimeter axles, big fat 20 inch tires. I believe they're 2.35, three piece cranks, nice platform pedals, and it has a regular BMX style seat seat post and a double bolt seat post clamp, which is super rad. One thing that needs to be noted, this top tube is 22 and a half inches. So the bike is absolutely rideable for adults. But if you still wanna shred, rip, jump, whatever you wanna do on a BMX bike and not worry about destroying a 30 year old vintage BMX, get one of these, take it out, give it a try. They are $999. I have a link down below, use that link, go over there, check them out, SWFT. That's gonna do it for today's video. Thanks again, and if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe. But more importantly, as always, stay rad.